everyone my name is tushar and i will be taking a presentation related to linux before i start i would like to know how many of you know something related to linux can you please raise your hand quite a few so what exactly you know about linux operating system anything else open source it's an open source operating system it has a file system it recognizes the usb as file system anything else apart from these points okay let me put it in a different way how would you compare linux operating system with windows sorry more secured in what terms in terms of okay viruses and trojans good it's free ah uh, yeah as one of my friend already said that it's open source right now let's start with a overview of this presentation i won't be calling it as a presentation i would rather describe it as a discussion rather than you know having a presentation so the overview is like what was there before linux what is unix what is linux history of linux different flavors of linux now coming to the topic that will be introduction to ubuntu origin of ubuntu versions of ubuntu software includes windows versus linux this is the overview and starting with the first point what was there before linux as you guys already might be knowing that there is an operating system called unix right how many of you have heard about unix some of them okay that's okay now what about microsoft everyone knows microsoft right and mac now before microsoft there was unix from 70s 1970s okay this was the operating system uh, which was built by some employees at at&t bell labs okay one among the employee is well you might have heard his name his name is right i'm having a photo of it okay so along with dennis ritchie there are few more guys which are quite famous can you name some kerningham have you heard about kerningham okay brian kerningham so these were the guys who initially uh, took the initiative of developing unix earlier it was developed as an as a form of assembly language later on it was rewritten in c right in 1980s microsoft as you know dominated the whole market right after that the era of steve jobs began which we today know know as instead of calling it as macintosh we refer to it as iphones ipads tablets and can you guess the photo which is after steve jobs dinesh torwal right he was a second year uh, student and he had one goal in his mind at that time and that was like you know uh, it's it's better to have a free version of an operating system at that time unix was there in the market and it was a bit expensive all end users cannot uh, afford it so he thought let's modify some code some source code of the kernel itself so as it can you know operate freely uh, his main intention was related to an academic version of unix okay so that's why he started 
rewriting the code inside the kernel so basically unix is a multitasking multi user operating system and as i told you couple of minutes back it was originally developed in 1969 by a group of employees at bell labs and the group consists of ken thompson dennis ritchie brian kerningham and it was recoded in c but the limitation of unix or scope is that it's a commercial operating system now when we refer to as linux it's a free operating system as some of you guys have already mentioned so what's the difference between a commercial operating system and a free operating system can i have an answer for that you need a serial key or a registration sort of thing in order to run it now what is linux linux is basically an open source version of unix as i told you earlier unix was an expensive operating system so people started looking for its cheaper version or the academic version or i would rather call it as a free version because we all believe in free right it does not matter whether it's a unix operating system a microsoft or a mac they all have one thing in common and that is they are all proprietary products they are all commercial right now as i told you earlier linus torvalds when he was studying computer science thought it would be a good idea to have a academic version of unix which is freely available so he began to work and this is how linux was born now this is the history of linux and that is linux is nothing but basically it's a kernel on top of which all other software applications reside i would like to point one more thing and that is linux is not unix okay now when he was a student linus torvald when he was a student he posted his first message on to the minix ftp and that was this i would like to read it out and that is hello netlanders due to a project i am working on in minix now minix is another operating system which was prevailing before unix okay i am interested in the posix standard definition could somebody please point me to a machine readable format of the latest posix rules ftp sites would be nice what this says or what this depicts is like when he was a student when he was studying like all of you guys his intentions were very clear and that was to develop an operating system free of cost it should be freely available without any restrictions or without uh, you know uh, any permissions okay or without purchasing any license keys in order to make that operating system operate so this was his first message later on he started rewriting the code on the other hand there was a guy whose name you might have heard richard stallman richard stallman is another guy who believes in free okay what he believes is like he is a firm believer of a software that could be freely available to any person in the world so that he or she can modify it or copy it in order to make it a far more better version of the current version okay but the problem here was linus on one side was rewriting the code within the kernel itself linux kernel itself that is half done and the remaining part was being filled by richard stallman okay he was writing some software applications 
which are freely available to everyone. Okay. Now, whenever we read his name, Richard Stallman's name, we associate that name with GNU. Some people call it as GNU. Okay. So basically, GNU is not Unix. The full form of GNU. It's a it's it's a recursive term, which basically means that GNU is not Unix, but it could be Unix-like. Okay. Now, it aims at developing a Unix-like operating system, which is free from copying or mo or modification. Stallman built his first GNU compiler in 1991. But the funny thing was, the operating system which was supposed to be compatible for his GNU C compiler was not yet ready. After a couple of years, both things were merged. Now, these are the different flavors of Linux. One is Red Hat, the other is Fedora, Debian, SUSE, and Ubuntu. Can anyone tell me something related to Red Hat? Okay. Now, what this guy has uh, mentioned is it's a commercial version of Linux. It's right, but it is partially correct. I would call it as a Red Hat. Enterprise Linux, which is a commercial version of Linux. Okay, the previous versions which were there before Fedora came in the market, before Fedora launched, there was only Red Hat Linux. Okay, and as uh, you may say, uh, you may see the pic that is there of F. We all know what it is, right? It's Fedora. Anyone knows anything related to SUSE? SUSE Linux. It's basically a very user friendly flavor of Linux. And uh, in what in typical other Linux flavor happens is like uh, you have to keep on pressing next, next, next button in order to finish the installation, in order to complete the installation. But when SUSE was launched in the market, along with the collaboration, done with Novel Netware, at that time they advertised it as a one click installation of an operating system. Okay? It was somewhere around 7 to 8 years back and that caught everybody's attention. If you can just click only once and you can complete the installation, you don't have to worry about the rest of the part. It will directly show you the finish button and then you have to reboot that's all so basically open suze or we call it as suze it's a one click installation operating system and it's very user friendly okay now the next thing next pick is of debian so who is the developer of ubuntu canonical uh, canonical is a term which is used for the uh, repositories wherein you can put all the softwares within it and then later on you can retrieve those softwares. So that is a canonical, I would rather call it as a third party or a collaboration done or uh, you can say a volunteer support by all developers which are there in the world. They keep their softwares within this canonical repositories and then later on you can retrieve it and you can install it in your operating system Ubuntu. Okay. So, the developer of Ubuntu is none other than Mark Shuttleworth. Now, let us go ahead with introduction to Ubuntu and that is origin of Ubuntu. Ubuntu is basically a, about people, it is about building a community. The or, original meaning of Ubuntu is you are doing something for humanity you are coming together and building an operating system or you are building a support in terms of application, in terms of software, 
which can be used by any other person at any corner of the world without paying a single penny okay so that's basically done keeping one word in mind and that is humanity okay now mark shuttleworth is an african entrepreneur in 2004 mark founded ubuntu project the objective of that project was to uh, build a high quality desktop and a server operating system initially they started with only one thing in mind and that was to build a high quality desktop later on they started building a server based addition of ubuntu operating system okay and the good thing about this is it is if it is freely available in the market and ubuntu has originated from debian the reason i'm saying this is because if you want to install any package in ubuntu you follow the same rules which you were following or which you are following in debian and there are two ways to do that if if you want to install any package in debian or in ubuntu either you can do it through command prompt okay or you can do it through a graphical user interface which uh, ubuntu has given which we call it as synaptic package manager right heard this name before okay great and from command terminal any uh, can i get an answer for uh, in order to in install a package from command terminal what do i have to do exactly sudo app get install and that package name okay now one thing you might notice is like you just write down sudo app get install package name that's all such as sudo app get install vlc okay which is nothing but it's a uh, it's a application or it's a player for uh, uh, which is used in order to view movies which stands for video lan client right so we just write vlc what if that package is not available within the repository how can i install that add apt repositories now what if uh, that package is available on the net but i am not able to uh, install it even after doing add apt repositories dpkg dpkg is like what exactly dpkg is nothing but it's a command basically and it stands for debian package in order to execute this command you have to write on the terminal dpkg space minus i vlc minus version number dot deb so this is the file extension of any package which is getting installed in either debian or in ubuntu okay so in fedora the extension is different in debian or ubuntu the extension is different can i have a extension name in fedora which we generally use rpm which stands for it stands for red hat package manager now uh, coming back to the versions of ubuntu the previous version which uh, uh, which was there and which is still there in the market still prevailing in the market and that is ubuntu 11.10 one i r i c one i r i c is the code name given to the ubuntu version okay the latest version of ubuntu is 12.04 the code name of it is precise pangolin any idea what this pangolin word means sorry it's an animal okay uh, what kind of animal ant eater uh, there is a name given for that ant eater in malay 
in Mal uh, uh, Malay is the language which is used in Malaysia. Am I right? Okay. So in Malay, they call it as penguling, okay, which basically means an anteater. Okay. So the same word, a slightly modified word, they have used, and it is called as pangolin. Now, uh, since you know about this uh, latest version, you might also be knowing about the latest features of this edition. So, can you name few? Sorry, HUD. Yeah, what is it basically? Widgets. So, once you click on that uh, icon on the top, you can, uh, the moment you try to write something, it will show you the icon of the recently opened applications or other applications which are installed in your system. So, my friend has uh, given a very good feature over here and that is HUD, uh, which basically means head up display. Okay. Now, the new version that is yet going to be released on October 2012, that will be Ubuntu's forthcoming version and it is 12.10. Now, as you already know that uh, we can have more than one operating system in our existing machine. So, at the max, how many operating systems can I have in my machine? That is the question. Any guess? So, at the max, we can have four operating systems physically residing on the machine. Now, if we talk about virtualization, we can have more than five operating systems, but basically they all depend on two factors. One among them is the sorry, one among them is the processor, the RAM is the next factor. Am I right? Please rectify me if I am wrong. Okay. Now, uh, the previous versions and even the still uh, versions which are still there in the market, okay, they, me they need minimum of 4 GB hard disk space in order to install a minimal set of applications of Ubuntu. Okay. You, can, you can install Ubuntu with minimal set of applications within 4 GB of hard disk space. Okay. So, uh, this is another advantage of Ubuntu. Now, if you want to install Ubuntu, there are two different ways through which you can do the installation. The first is through LAN, through network and the other is through a CD. Now, within a CD, uh, you might have heard this term live CD, right? So, what is it basically? You can run the OS, the complete OS on the CD, right? Now, these are some of the softwares which are there in Ubuntu operating system. A Firefox browser, we all are familiar with this and uh, we know why, you, why we use this. The other one is Thunderbird. Evolution email, open suit, which is also called as open office suit. Now, this is a quite an alternative to your exactly Microsoft Office. And you have GIMP. What is GIMP? It is an image editing software alternative to Photoshop. Now, what about the music player? Are there any modifications within the uh, music players or still they are running the Banshee, okay, now it is Jumbo, right. And what about Totem? Totem is still there without any codex support still? Whenever you open it and it will still, uh, is it still asking for, uh, you need to search for the plugins and then uh, you click on that plugins and then after couple of minutes it will stay unable to connect, right. So, that is why you install VLC, which is far more faster. You just add that PPT or slash PPA and it will start working. And then there are games. Now, coming to
to this discussion and that is related to windows and ubuntu windows versus ubuntu now as we all know that it needs a serial key to complete its installation right now there are ways to get the serial key i got the answer <laughs> but that is not the case with linux you don't have to install linux operating system except red hat enterprise linux or i would say the commercial product of any linux flavor needs a serial key other than that all other operating systems which are freely available in the market they don't need any serial key okay it is freely downloadable on the uh, from the net and it doesn't cost you a single penny or there is always a second option you can always ask a friend for a cd and uh, you can never return it back or perhaps you can return it back after 4 days <laughs> so the other difference uh, between windows and ubuntu is like in windows we have a command interpreter which we all know as cmd or c o m m a n d right have you ever used it so what all different commands you have typed within it ip config anything else trace root ping ping command is used well, ping is used for okay just getting the reply whether my uh, lan is connected properly or not right or you can do a lot of things with ping can these commands work on linux no but some of these commands can run on linux such as cd cd dot dot okay mkdir rm remove directory or mv move directory or rm dir which is used to remove a directory right now there is one more difference between linux and windows and that is you can have multiple users logged in at the same time on one single machine and that is possible in linux right that is not possible in windows in order to log in into another set of users first you have to log out yeah you can switch but that doesn't log out right but up to how many users you can switch in windows okay that's great but here in linux you can log into seven different users at the same time or eight different users or more than eight uh, perhaps it could be like 10 but uh, most people don't log in up to 10 different users on the same linux machine okay but i would rather stop at eight different users you can log in into eight different set of users on the same machine okay now without even logging out okay now the good thing about linux is like the moment you start your machine it gives you a graphical prompt wherein you type your username you type in your password okay now if you want to log in to another set of user what will you do in linux any idea that is one way any other way uh yeah we can switch to users provided first you create another user then you can switch okay so how to create a different user or sorry how to log into different user 
sorry any answer okay what you can do is you can press control alt and f1 at the same time you will get a screen which is not graphical okay which will display at the top left hand side as ubuntu or linux any linux flavors name and the version and beneath that there will be a word written as login now you enter your username then press enter you enter your password you can directly login now similarly in this way only you can log in to seven different users on the shell prompt itself i am coming to what the shell prompt is okay now in windows there is only one desktop right once you log in you get a fancy desktop in linux you have you have how many four different desktops and you can simultaneously switch on to or toggle to all these four desktops at the same time okay you can uh, run some applications on one desktop some applications on other remaining desktops okay now there is a way to even change this desktop we call it as theme so can i get some names of these themes unity is there okay uh, somebody doesn't know the names so uh, how about uh, have you heard about kde so what all these things are these are desktops but basically these are themes okay any other thing other than kde gnome is there by default this is what is installed right now it's unity in ubuntu um, perhaps still it is uh, in fedora it is still gnome if i'm not wrong i i don't know the uh, uh, what they are installing right now nowadays in the latest version of fedora i completely lost the touch but uh, perhaps you guys can enlighten me uh, fedora still that gnome is prevailing okay and any other uh, lightweight x11 desktop environment uh, can uh, sorry lxde is there which is a very lightweight desktop environment then uh, there is one more xfce kde is also there okay so uh, what about all these lightweight desktop environments so why why do they build it any specific reason why do we have lightweight uh, desktop environments when there are you know uh, much heavyweight competitors in the market sorry for low memory uh, machines minimal to run on minimal systems okay uh, basically these lightweight desktop environments such as xfce lxde okay these are used as the small footprints of the entire graphical user interface to run on minimal machines machines which are operating on arm arm controllers right or pic controllers now in machines having multiple versions of windows we have a bootloader called windows boot manager in linux we have grub nowadays it is grub 2 right in the earlier versions of linux when uh, red hat linux was there in the market that is before fedora came in the market it was lilo l i l o 
which generally stands for yeah linux loader now uh, what is the difference between that linux loader and grub okay one comes up with a very good graphical interface and the other one doesn't now can you guess which one grub okay now how you can get inside the grub shift or just writing command as grub you can get inside the grub provided you have that root privilege what will you do when you are inside grub what can you do when you are inside grub you can change the options am i right you can change the options of other operating system for example whenever your machine is installed with one or more operating systems you get a chance to select either one of them right now suppose your windows operating system label is at the top and ubuntu operating systems label is at the bottom and if you want to change it what can you do you get inside the grub namely the file is called as grub.cfg okay or it is grub.conf okay is there any other name no so within grub file you can make the modifications suppose if you want to uh, keep ubuntu operating system label at the top before windows you can do that now this file grub it resides inside which directory there is a directory called etc directory within that directory there is one more directory called grub okay grub.d and within that directory it is there it is not hidden it is there if you do ls it will display now there is another difference a major difference between windows file system and linux file system and that is as you all know windows file system comes up with ntfs and fat32 right in linux we have ext2 earlier it was minix file system then there was fs then it became th there were certain modifications within fs then it became ext2 which is generally extended file system ext2 and then there was ext3 ext4 now the basic difference between ext2 and ext3 is can anyone say what is the basic difference between ext2 file system and ext3 file system the basic difference between these two file system is one among them keeps the log of the entire files okay now let me explain it to you in a much more simpler way suppose you are working something working on to something and uh, the power shuts down okay now what happens is like uh, the file on to which you are working the data gets lost right so what ext3 does is like it uses a term called journaling which keeps the data and it will recover that data okay and then that data will be displayed to you so this happens because of journaling which was not there in ext2 now think about all the possibilities of this file system if it is residing on a server okay if a server is having an ext2 file system what it does just think of a scenario where power shuts down and that is not a normal desktop machine and it is a server machine when after 
after the power comes when you switch it on what it will do initially is it will try to recover the files okay at the time of recovery it will start from 0 and it will go up to 100 okay i'm just telling an instance which means it will check for all the files unnecessarily which is nothing but it's a waste of time now the time can be optimized in ext3 file system if this file system ext3 file system if this is having a log of all other files apart from the files in which you are currently working when the power goes and comes back again it will only try to repair the file onto which you are working the rest of the files are kept as it is okay this will save a lot of time now there are other variants of windows there is windows 98 windows nt windows 2000 xp server editions and nowadays we have windows 8 now i would like to ask you one question and that is is it safe to keep our data which is confidential onto the cloud that to windows okay you can have a private cloud uh, windows uh, i would i would then ask one more question is windows private or is windows having a private cloud do you think no one can able to access it the point i would like to notify here is like it's not the only windows that is in the market for cloud it is also ubuntu ubuntu one is there in the market okay uh, ubuntu enterprise cloud right now in windows what we generally see as an executable file is an exe file right so uh, we have already discussed related to synaptic package manager and there is one more thing uh, in linux and that is you can download the entire source code of an application or an or a, or a software and that source code comes in the format of either dot tar file or that dot dot uh, tar dot gz or dot gz file or dot bz file uh, these are nothing but these are the uh, sorry the, the these are the options which are used to compress a set of files or a set of directories okay now once you uncompress these directories you can go inside a directory and then you can install an application now there is a way to install an application first you have to do dot slash configure then you have to do make and then you have to do make install this is how you can install an op uh, an application in ubuntu or in debian or in linux okay in this way in windows we have turbo c or borland c in linux we have gcc cc c++ okay and uh, these are nothing but these are the compilers which are used to compile either a c file or a c++ file okay in windows we have a shell interpreter each and every operating system has a kernel a shell and then there are set of applications okay now in windows we have a dos shell okay in linux we have sh we have bash we have ash csh in all there are uh, some 10 other uh, 10 or 11 other shell interpreters which are different from others 
such as there is a difference between bash shell and zsh shell or tcsh shell can anyone tell me what is the difference between a bash shell and tcsh shell any idea as the name suggest tcsh shell it is nothing but it's it's used to compile a c program okay or i would uh, take an example of csh shell it is a minimized set of shell which only uses some specific commands which are in related which are in relation to compiling either a c program or a c++ program okay whereas bash shell is coming up with all other options such as uh, you can type the command ls you can type some normal commands such as pwd cd mkdir rmdir and so on we can use this pcsh or uh, csh shell because it is a minimal shell interpreter which can be used for an embedded system wherein you have to type very small set of commands uh, sorry when you have to type or execute very small set of commands okay now in windows we have an integrated development environment better known as ide which is dotnet frameworks or uh, visual c++ vb is there visual basic right in linux we have netbeans we have eclipse right again these are also available for windows edition okay the good thing about these frameworks these uh, ides netbeans or mono develop or anjuta or eclipse they are all open source they are freely available for download which is not the case with vb or vc++ once you boot in the system you get the login prompt you log in and you can uh, start using an application such as firefox or you can start in using an application such as a shell uh, terminal okay if you are a an extreme developer if you want to develop some application or if you want to modify an existing op, uh, application which you have recently downloaded from the net you can do that using a shell terminal and this is what it generally says in some of the versions it's like welcome to linux but nowadays you don't see this so you can see this if you want to and you have to edit one file uh, and that is bash rc file you can write this within uh, this file and you can rerun it okay you can rerun this script this welcome message will appear on your screen Thank you.